Welcome, this is now question 7 for um, LXL C3 June 2015 paper. Um, so this paper, um, we'll give it this graph. Uh, now it's got the, f uh, it's called g of x, um, and it's got the function x squared, uh, brackets 1 take x, times e to the power of negative 2x. Uh, the first question says, um, put it in this form where the derivative of uh, g of x is equal to another function of x, uh, times e to the power of negative 2x. Now, a um, couple of things should be uh, stirring your mind here. So, we've actually, it looks like we've got three functions there. Uh, how do we times it out? Do we do we times x squared by 1 and then negative x? Or, or do we do uh, e to the negative 2x times 1 and times negative x? Well, if we did it that way, the, other, the second way, it'd be a lot more complicated. Because if you look what we've got to try and achieve here, We've got to be able to, what this is essentially saying, I'll put it in another way, is find g to the, find, find the derivative of g to the x, and then take out e to the x, e to the negative 2x as a common factor, and that should leave you with a, another function of x. Um, we're also told that this other function of x, f of x, is a, a cubic. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do this. So the first thing I would do is rewrite this g of x. Okay, so first thing I would do is expand it. So x squared times 1 take x, so it's going to be x squared take x cubed, and that is times by e to the negative 2x. Now there's no point going any further than that, because we've got to differentiate it. Now, what this essentially is, is it looks like there's three functions of x, but it's x squared take x cubed is actually one function of x. So we use our product rule for differentiation. So u is equal to x squared take x cubed, so therefore u dashed is 2x squared take um, 3x squared, okay, uh, v is equal to e to the negative 2x, and v dashed is equal to negative 2 e to the negative 2x, okay, so they are your key bits of information, right, and then I'd start by going, okay, well, g of x, g dash of x, sorry, is um, v u dashed plus u v dashed, and I'll mention this time and time again, I like putting it that way around because that's the way around in the quotient rule and you need that. Uh, but for this particular question, it doesn't matter. Um, so the first one is v u dash. So it's e to the negative 2x times u dash, which is uh, 2x take 3x squared plus uh, v, u, so, sorry, plus um, yeah, u v dash, u being x squared take x cubed. And that is times by v dashed, which is negative 2e to the negative 2x. Okay. Um, and then I would expand this individually, so uh, square bracket e either side of it. So e to the t negative 2x times 2x, so just 2x, e to the negative 2x. And take 3x squared, so uh, take 3x squared e to the negative 2x bracket that off, plus, and then we expand the second bit. Now, I leave it in the kind of same form, so it's, it's the function and then e to the negative 2x in this case, because otherwise if you start messing it around, when you come to um, simplify it, it's going to be a lot bit more difficult. So that's added to uh, x squared times negative 2 e to the negative 2x, so it's uh, negative 2 e to the negative 2x x squared. I always, I always put the e to the x first. Then it's negative x cubed times negative 2 e to the negative 2x. So you add on there the um, 2 e to the negative 2x x cubed. And that's just a case of simplifying this down. So um, again, essentially you could rewrite out that um, as another function of x. But, um, you know, it's up to you. So actually that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be quite awkward. Just so I can see where I'm going, because we've got a plus and a minus here, and I might confuse um, some people. But so it's 2x e to the negative 2x, take 3x squared uh, e to the negative 2x, and you take away 2 e to the 2x, negative 2x, sorry, x squared, plus um, this 2 e to the negative 2x x cubed. Okay. So that's where we are so far. That's essentially g dash of x. But because we want it, you've got to keep in mind we want it in this uh, form. So b 
basically we said g to, this is equal to g to the negative uh, sorry g to the dash of x or uh, the derivative of gx um, it's not simplified yet but so therefore we need to simplify it and I'll point out is obviously we need to take out e to the negative two x as a common factor so that's why I said keep it in one kind of form um, so g to the dash of x so the first thing I would look at is um, how many standard x's have we got well we've just got the uh, 2x e to the negative 2x no, there's no others that have got a singular x in them um, so that's the first one I'd write obviously you can write it increase in power, decrease in power doesn't matter um, so 2x e to the negative 2x plus um, so the next one I'd look at well, actually don't write plus because it might be a minus um, then I would increase power so I'd be looking at the x squareds now so we've got one x squared there and we've got another x squared there um, so that'd be negative 5 e to the x, sorry, negative 5, take 5, uh, x squared e to the x, negative 2x, sorry. Um, and then we finally look at the x cubed. We've only got 1x cubed, um, which is neg uh, plus 2 e to the negative 2x, x cubed. So it's just plus 2 um, x cubed e to the negative 2x. Okay, so that's g dash of x, simplified. Now, what we one that's made that equal to is a function of x that we don't know yet um, that is multiplied by e to the negative 2x so the logical thing to do would be take out e to the 2x of this factor okay so what we need to do is factorize this and by factorize all we do is simply take out e to the negative 2x okay e to the negative 2x and there's a reason why we're doing this for part b and c okay so that's 2x take 5x squared plus 2x cubed because again, you can rewrite that in any way you want, okay? But say, okay, therefore, that is in the required form. That's that's the form they want it in. Um, okay, so that's that's part A. It's quite a long part A, actually, I think. But um, it is worth a nice... Oh, it's only worth three marks. Um, this next one, it says, hence find the range of G. This is a G function. It's just, it's just say G of X, really. So this it says, hence find the range of this graph. Now, the range, y values, so obviously we're looking at the height of the graph uh, and, the, and the lowness of it, if that makes any sense. So, because this is g dash of x, not just g of x, when this g dash of x equals 0, because g dash of x is equal to fx e to the 2x, when, when all that is equal to 0, or either side, which is this, when that is equal to zero, we're not finding where it intercepts the x-axis, we're finding out the, the points of these um, turning points. Now the turning points are obviously the highest and the lowest points of the graph. And they, they will have the same y-coordinate, a different x-coordinate granted, but they will have the same y-coordinates. Because you're not going to have, your you, you graph isn't going to do this and, and get lower and lower as you go along, it's, it's going to have the same height. So what we're saying is, just find out the y coordinate here and the y coordinate of the other x, the lowest, because we've got two um, coordinates there. All right. So we just find out the y coordinates of them, and then because we find out the range of this function is inside the function, so anywhere between these two y coordinates, there's loads of corresponding x coordinates. So if, what we do is we make the function equal to zero. So that immediately gets rid of the e to the negative two x. So therefore we're left with this other function, the, the f of x, and that's the reason we've been asked to find it. So therefore 2x take 5x squared um, plus 2x cubed, that is equal to 0. But it's very hard to solve cubics, and one of the main ways that we have at A-level of solving cubics is to take out x as a common factor. And because we've not got plus 7 or whatever, we can do that. So um, x. So that would be 2 take 5x plus 2x squared. Now you could easily write that as, um, it's probably easier actually to write x, uh, 2x squared take 5x plus 2. Okay, so what we do there is, in fact, I'm going to actually write it the way around. So hopefully you can still see. Um, so x, 2x squared take 5x plus 2. Okay, so all we're solving now is a quadratic and we simply factorise. So x times... So we're not really bothered about this other x because that's going to be zero and obviously we already knew that but that's not a turning point. 
Um, well, not technically it is, but you know. Anyway, uh, so we take out 2x in one bracket, x in another bracket, that's equal to 0, so you've got negative 2 and negative 1. So therefore, x is either uh, a half or x is 2. So, we've got x is a half and x is 2. Now, x of a half is obviously going to be this one. And x equal 2 is obviously going to be that one. But that doesn't help us find the range. Because remember, to find the range, we've got to find the y coordinates. So, all we simply do is sub uh, 2 and a half into the original problem. You know, you can either sub it into this one. Or you can sub it into our, our this one. Doesn't matter. Get the same answer. I'd prefer to sub it into that one. Um, but again, it's up to you. Right, so then what you get is g of, um, I'll just, because I don't quite have the room, um, g of a half is 1 over 8e, or 1 eighth of e to the minus 1. Um, and g of 2 is minus 4e to the power of minus 4, or put it in other words, um, 4 over uh, e to the 4. Okay, so what does that tell us? Well, this point, um, the g to the half has a height of 1 over 8e, and the g of 2 has a, a, a lowness of, lowness of uh, minus 4 over e to the power of minus 4. So, therefore, if you uh, work that out and find the range, then you get the range as being um, minus, so between these two limits, so it's minus 4e to the minus 4, or minus 4 over e to the 4, um, so the y, and then the height of 108e. Okay, so that is your range. Just basically, that's the y coordinate of a half and 1 over 8e. Sorry, 1 over 8e is y coordinate of a half, and minus 4e to the minus 4 is the y coordinate of 2. Okay, so hopefully you've seen why we've done that. Now, the next little bit, part C, doesn't require any mathematical working out, it's just a case of can you remember what you were taught? which I'm assuming for quite a lot of people in the country, is a no. But, uh, you know, the more intelligent beings amongst you, I think that insulted them, yet again, seems to work every video, I mean, no one's lynched me yet, um, so, whatever, uh, need to turn the clock, so probably, anyway, I'm not an arsehole, but uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, this part C doesn't require any showing uh, or working out, so, um, I've quite conveniently filled the board there, it's a good job I have to write anything else. Anyway, so what this question says, so part C, 7 part C says, uh, find the inverse function of uh, g of x. I don't know, sorry. No, why am I going with this? Um, forget, forget said that. Say why there is no um, inverse function for g. So there's no g to the minus 1 of x. Now, very good, you could try and find it, but, you, I mean, it'd be really hard to find it, and it'd be, you'd probably make a mess. But seeing as it's only worth, um, so it's only worth one mark, one mark, yeah, so is it's a state why the function g to the minus 1 doesn't exist, um, just need to know, for a function to exist, it has to be a 1 to 1 function, and uh, what that means is, you pick a y coordinate, say 2, uh, you'll draw across and you only hit the curve once, whereas if you draw a, a line from y equals 2, you will hit it 1, 2, 3, however many times you want to continue. So it clearly isn't a 1 to 1 function. Therefore, it can't have an inverse. Now, the reason that is, is because an inverse is reflected in the graph y equals x. And if you were to do y equals x there, you would have functions that sort of have three different sides on each part of the y equals x, and you'd go, okay, well, what is what part of the function? And it basically wouldn't make sense. Um, I tried to explain it in the best possible way there, uh, but without showing you Mathematically, it's quite difficult, and plus you don't really need to know that for levels. So uh, you just need to know the fact that um, a, a function can only have an inverse function if it is a one-to-one -one function, or one y coordinate is associated with one x coordinate, or vice versa. Okay, so as I said, hopefully that's been helpful. We're going to move on to question eight, which is um, not too much of a bad question personally. I don't think. Uh, well. It's just a case of uh, seeing where you get with that one. It does look quite complicated, uh, question 8, but uh, especially part B, you could do that, even if you couldn't do part A, as with most A-level questions. 
Alright, so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next question or video or whatever you choose to punish yourself with.